The wearability was a really big uh, part of what I had made at that point um, because I thought that a passive interaction, right, something that you strap on yourself and then live your life and not think about it, right? This thing is constantly recording uh, different data about the air you're breathing, but it's not something that you're actively going and, and pointing and clicking. Um, so, a university um, or, or a research lab, really just on their own, really. And so, uh, citizen science is a really big movement that's been happening a lot as uh, different technologies and things become much more accessible to, uh, to us regular folk. Uh, as soon as I realized the system, it was actually a mobile peripheral, so it was a Bluetooth sensor that connected to your phone wirelessly, and then it used your phone's data to shoot that up to the cloud. So use your phone to know the location, where you were, and, uh, and also to shoot that data up into the internet and then come back down um, in, in the form of maps and stuff we'll look at in a moment. So here you're seeing some kids uh, from that program in Corona Park, Queens, uh, collecting data um, and, and, and learning. I think I'm going to tell a really quick story about this. Probably the most interesting uh, experience that they had was standing outside of the curb, outside, this is uh, the New York Hall of Science in Queens. They were on the curb in front of the museum. There was a bus that was parked, that was idling, it was on. And just standing on the sidewalk, maybe four feet behind the bus, they watched the numbers on the sensor jump, like really high, um, from the carbon monoxide and the airborne particles. And the kids were like, wow, like this, you know, this bus that's on is actually making a really big difference. Then they went back in and they did a little bit of research and they found out there's actually a law that says a bus is not allowed to idle in front of a public institution for more than 10 minutes. So then they, they really you know, saw, oh, there's a value in that law. There's a reason why that law is in place. They wrote some letters and, and I don't know if someone got fired or not, but that's the idea. Um, so it's a screenshot of the Android application that was, uh, that was showing them uh, here ambient sound, which is another big pollut pollutant, right, in urban environments, uh, carbon monoxide. PM2.5 is a very tiny airborne particle um, that actually the uh, World Health Organization has said is one of the biggest indicators of air quality. So then they went back into the classroom and saw all the places that they had visited in the park and were able to click at all the little data points and see exactly what numbers they collected and got to compare it to, uh, to where they had been and, 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 and all around. It was a really excellent project. So I'm gonna move on now. About a year after that, I started working with some friends um, on this project called the Air Quality Egg. So does anyone here know what Kickstarter is? Yeah, so Kickstarter is a great platform for funding ideas, right? Really taking your idea and saying, hey, like, check out this idea, if you think that this is worth making, you should donate some money and, uh, and get a reward and, and try to make it happen. So it worked out really well for us. Uh, we probably sold about 1,200 um, sensor units, which I'm going to describe in a minute. Um, uh, and, and we, really the most important part about this project is, is about community. It's about bringing people who care about air quality and who want to participate in learning about air quality um, and bringing them together. And so. Uh, we have a nice, nice, strong community right now, really active on, on the internet. So here's some quick prototypes of some circuit boards and some sensors. Um, this measures carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, uh, temperature, humidity. We've got add-ons for radiation, ozone, VOCs, which is volatile organic compounds, um, and a couple other things. The way that this guy with the air quality egg works is there are two parts. There's a sensor unit that you hang outside of your window, and then a base station that is, sits inside of your home and plugs into uh, an Ethernet router, into your uh, Wi-Fi router. Um, and uses that to push data in real time about every five or 10 seconds. It's pushing a new data point about the air quality right outside of your window. The bigger idea here is that in New York City, the EPA, the uh, US Environmental Protection Agency, that's the government organization that's in charge of air quality, they have about 20 monitors for all of New York City. Now, New York City is a huge place. I think you can imagine those 20, those 20 monitors are, uh, you know, the data coming out of them has very little to do with actually what you're breathing. So the concept of the air quality egg is to bring low-cost sensors and put a lot of them out there. Right, so that we can get much finer grain detail about you know, where we're living and working and playing. Um, all the data is open data, which is really exciting because people, that opens data up to a lot of different people. Maybe they're uh, researchers or they're trying to make build visualizations. Um, that's a really big aspect of the project. Um, another big aspect is the open source nature. Does everyone hear what open source means? Woo. 
Yeah. So open source is this idea about making something and putting out all the plans that it took to make that. All the schematics, all the code, um, every piece of it uh, goes on the internet. And what really, what's exciting about that is that you get to remix your work, right? And you get other people to remix your work even for you. This is a really cool thing that happened. Um, we went to Union Square. This was a, a group approached us, the Public Laboratory for uh, Open Technology and Science. Um, they said, we want to build an air column monitor. So basically, we added a bunch of sensors. You can see here, we added a barometer for altitude. Uh, we added a wind sensor for wind speed. Um, and then actually attached it to a balloon and flew it in, uh, in Union Square and were able to watch the numbers changing on a vertical scale, which is a very different way of thinking about it uh, when you uh, think about it normally, which is just walking around on, uh, on the street, right? Um, so that's, that's really exciting. That's a really exciting component of, of building open source projects and sharing your work. Um, the enclosure was a really big deal. You can see a lot of different options, a lot of different iterations that we had, right? Iterations are just making things over and over again until they're better and better. Here's some laser cut ones on the right side. This is a 3D printed model on the left side. Um, and we really wanted to make a beautiful product, right? So, uh, so what we ended up with was something very similar to what you're seeing on the left side. I'm, gonna, I'm almost done. This is a, a quick video from the C3 project that I did, um, I helped write a lot of curriculum about air quality and about, about that technology. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and play the video. All right, yeah, no problem. So this is an uh, activity that I designed. Uh, we did this over two afternoons. Essentially, every student built their own air quality sensor. And the way they did that was first designing the enclosure, which you're gonna see in a moment. Oh, yeah, there's me explaining some stuff. And then five LEDs. And the LEDs are all little compacts. This this orange circle, for everyone who's got the carbon monoxide sensor. This is That's a carbon monoxide sensor. And some LEDs. Every student got that exact same thing. And then designed their own uh, enclosures that they were gonna take home and set up somewhere in their house where they might want to watch either they either um, ambient noise or carbon monoxide levels, right? So a place like your garage, for example, right? So here's some paper prototypes. Paper prototypes are really just sketching things out or maybe cutting paper out and building a paper version of what you're building. And, uh, and then they, they took these home and put them somewhere interesting in their home to watch how the LEDs change over time uh, and how those numbers uh, you know, are, are changing the color of light. Um, so this is really exciting because uh, the kids thought, you know, I, I was a little bit concerned that this technology might, not, might be a little bit too advanced, but not at all. I was totally wrong. They jumped right into it. And, uh, and they, they wanted to know even more, which was really, really exciting. Um, and then at the end, like I said, everyone took, took theirs home and, uh, and came back and talked about how the numbers changed when the car turned on, uh, how the LEDs changed, or when, um, when it was rush hour, things like that. So, um, so yeah, we really exciting. The uh, EPA gave us, we won an EPA grant to put uh, about 30 air quality eggs to, to write some curriculum and take them to Cypress uh, Cypress Hills High School, which is a, a school in Queens, um, and, 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 and really teach young people about uh, what it takes to learn about air quality and how to analyze that data and what air quality means to them. Um, it's pretty exciting. El Puente Community Center in Brooklyn, they also uh, are working with us to, uh, to deploy several air quality eggs um, with their students as well. Um, it's really exciting time because people really are jumping into the space and seeing that like this is not just something that um, you know you have to be at a university or a high-end laboratory to get involved with, right? Citizen science uh, is really this concept of, of us being able to do it ourselves, even as normal people. Um, and so that's that's uh, that's all I've got. Thanks so much.